It's Voodoo 51292's Top 10 Games of 2011. My personal picks for the best 10 games of the year. Hello everybody, I'm Voodoo 51292 and welcome to my countdown of the Top 10 Games of 2011. In the last video, basically we just went over a few simple rules just for you to keep in mind as you watch the videos throughout this countdown. So, it seems like every time you have to narrow down a list of items into a list of your top 5 or top 10 in this case, it always seems like, no matter how much thought you put into it, it always seems like one item gets cheated out. It just seems like that item should get mentioned even though it didn't quite make it into your top 10 per se. And with me making this list of my top 10 favorite games of 2011, it was no different, and therefore, to honor that, I will be giving out an honorable mention this year for 2011. So, what exactly happens when you take a classic FPS game development studio, and they release a new IP that provides an interesting spin on your standard FPS? Well, you get my honorable mention for 2011. Check it out. Honorable mention for 2011. Rage. I think it's safe to say that the gaming public was pretty excited when they learned that id Software, the creative minds behind classic FPS series such as Doom and Quake, were coming out with a brand new IP in 2011 that would be called Rage. And I think a lot of people were confused at first exactly what kind of game Rage would be. Would it be a open world FPS game similar to Fallout with RPG elements, or would it be just a regular linear FPS that we see way too many of nowadays coming out each and every year. Well, when the final product hits shelves, consumers realize that this game wasn't really either. It was a combination of linear FPS gameplay mixed with some interesting RPG elements, such as limited free roam and the ability to loot and craft certain items. Rage is set in a post-apocalyptic world, which maybe we're all too familiar with, but nonetheless, it's an interesting setting. Basically, the world has gone to hell, and things didn't go quite the way people plan when they put you and several other individuals into these basically big metal containers called arcs and put you in hibernated sleep so that you would wake up 100 years in the future and repopulate the earth after this disaster. Well, you quickly realize things went pretty south and didn't go the way that people had planned it. So now your job, of course, is to wander this wasteland and figure out just what the hell is going on and what everybody is doing in this post-apocalyptic world now that it seems that, as with some of these other games, that all of the technology we had had over these years has mysteriously vanished and now people once again are living in more rustic ways. Rage brings some interesting gameplay elements to the table, and I would say at its heart, Rage is definitely a linear FPS game, but it does kind of break the mold of what we're used to. Again, by giving you the ability to craft items, and the travel system isn't quite what you would expect. You actually travel by vehicle in this game and fight some bandits along the way. Uh, in your vehicle. You can also do some racing and things like that to upgrade your vehicle. But with the FPS gameplay, you will fight your way through many a cave and building, slaughtering various people across this wasteland. All very varied and highly detailed with beautiful graphics that the game does have, and all played at a very smooth 60 frames per second, which is pretty impressive if you ask me. Also, Rage provides some interesting weaponry. You have pretty common weaponry, such as your assault rifle and pistols, but there is some interesting weaponry, such as the wing stick, which is basically a deadly three-armed boomerang that can be used to cut enemies' heads clean off their bodies. So, Rage is a pretty fun experience. It's different, and it's unique. So, how come Rage is only an honorable mention and didn't make the official top 10 countdown? Well, to put it simply, Rage isn't anything that we really haven't seen before gameplay-wise. And, to be honest, the gameplay does get kind of repetitive after a while of going through buildings and basically just slaughtering everything that moves. There's not a whole ton of quest variety in this game. 
Also, there is some really bad problems with texture pop in with the graphics. And also, the plot in this game is very thin, and it's certainly not anything that you're going to want to play if you're a big fan of deep, intense story plot lines, that's for sure. And the ending leaves you, I would say, more than once. But all that being said, Rage is certainly an interesting package. Just don't pick it up for the multiplayer because the multiplayer is just nothing but a bunch of driving games which really don't have anything to do with the story, which is kind of an odd choice for it to not put FPS multiplayer in the game, but it's their decision. Overall, I still had a good time playing the game Rage. It certainly stood out to me as an interesting and unique game, and I certainly hope that the IP continues and that they're able to make some corrections so that the game can be bigger and better in the future.